Can't get enough extreme action? Do you have a need for speed that can't be quenched? Is snowboarding down Mount Everest in an avalanche your idea of an awesome adventure? Then you've come to the right place. Because it's time for World Championship Penguin Curling! Not what you were expecting. Oh, don't let their appearance fool you. When these penguins hit the ice, look out, because it's about to get wild. Let's meet our four competitors. First up is Blizzard. Now, everyone who thinks Blizzard is going to win, stand up and cheer as loud as you can. Next up, we have Snowball. Everyone who thinks Snowball is going to win, Stand up and cheer as loud as you can! In the third starting spot is Ice Cube. If you think Ice Cube is going to win, stand up and cheer as loud as you can! In our final spot is Popsicle. If you think Popsicle is going to win, stand up and cheer as loud as you can! All right. Our penguins are ready to get this party started. Don't forget to cheer as loud as you can for your penguin. We're gonna start in three, two, one. And they're off. Oh boy, just look at them go. The track is slick today. This is gonna be a close one. Oh my! The speed is unreal. This is anybody's race. Blizzard makes a move! Popsicle is not backing down! Ooh, Snowball almost wiped out! Blizzard almost wiped out! Ice Cube is battling for the lead! This is a record-setting pace! I'm afraid to even blink! Wow! Ice Cube wins a photo finish! Congrats to all you Ice Cube fans out there! I don't know about you folks, but I was on the edge of my seat that entire race. I think I need to drink some coffee just to calm down. Be sure to join us next time for more Penguin Curling Action. Good morning and welcome to Spectrum. I'm so glad that you joined us today. Today we're starting a new theme all about the love of God, especially with Valentine's coming up. So you stay tuned, let's worship together, and then I'll tell you some more. Good morning, everybody. Why don't you stand up on your feet and we'll sing some songs.
right, let's sing together at the top mm -hmm. of my lungs. I wanna sing about it, I wanna scream and shout it, I wanna sing it right now at the top of my lungs. I sing with all of my heart, I will praise you, God, you are everything. You're the reason that I lift my voice at the top of my lungs. I sing with all of my heart, I will praise you, God, you are everything. You're the reason that I lift my voice at the top of my lungs. Let's sing together. You're all I need. You're all I need every day of my life. Oh, I believe it. I believe it. Yeah. You're all I need. I'm gonna scream and shout it, I'm gonna scream and shout it, I'm gonna sing it right now at the top of my lungs. I sing with all of my heart, I will praise you, God you are everything. You're the reason that I lift my voice at the top of my lungs. I sing with all of my heart, I will praise you, God you are the top of my lungs. I'm gonna scream it, oh, I'm gonna shout it, I'm gonna sing it out. I'm gonna scream it, oh, I'm gonna shout it, I'm gonna sing it out at the top of my lungs. I'm gonna scream at the top of my lungs. With all of my heart, I will praise you. God, you are everything. You're the reason that I lift my voice. At the top of my lungs, I sing. With all of my heart, I will praise you. God, you are everything. You're the reason that I lift my voice at the top of my lungs. I sing with all of my heart. I will praise you. God, you are everything. You're the reason that I lift my voice at the top of my lungs. Yeah, at the top of my lungs Nobody else 
time together today, didn't we? We're going to listen to the message now. Well, today we are going to talk about how God looks after us because he loves us so much. Do you know how much God loves us? Not this much, not this much, not this much, not this much, even bigger than this much. That's how much God loves us and he looks after us. Well, let's do our highlighter of the week first. So we have to highlight what we learned last week. Let's see if we can remember. What did we learn about praying for someone? What are we supposed to do? Do you remember? Right, we're supposed to invite, or we're supposed to ask, sorry. We're supposed to ask them if we can pray for them, invite the Holy Spirit to come, and then pray and watch and listen for what's, uh, what God's doing. Good job. All right, who was our great example? Who do we follow after? If we want to know how to do something, who do we watch? We watch Jesus. That's right, he's our great example. What about, should we take time to pray for someone? Or should we rush through it very, very quickly and just pray for them? No, we don't want to rush, do we? We want to take time and pray for them. And then, like I said, watch and listen to see what the Holy Spirit's doing. And lastly, can any age pray for people? Can a five-year-old pray for someone? And a 95-year-old pray for someone? Sure they can. Any age can pray for people. So those of you that think, well, I might be too young or too old, you're never too young and you're never too old. Well, today, like I said, we're going to talk about how God looks after us. Well, I brought a doll. This is Susie, Susie the doll. I'm gonna fix her clothes here. Now, if I had you here in person, we might do a contest. But since you're at home, I can't do that. But I'm gonna ask you a question. If you had Susie the doll, and you had this little diaper, would you know how to put a diaper on Susie the doll? I don't know if I did before I became a mom. What about some of you boys? Could you put a diaper on a doll? I don't know. If you were here in person, I think we'd have a contest and we'd pick two boys and we'd see who could put the diaper on the fastest and the right way. If you put it on her head, yeah, no, that doesn't count. But who could put it on the fastest and the right way? That would be a fun contest, wouldn't it? I think maybe I'll do that with the kids in person. Well, does anybody here have a new baby brother or sister at home? Or maybe you did in the last few years? I know, let's see, Etsy and Eddie, he did because, or not Etsy, sorry, Oyaze and Eddie, he did because Etsy was born and she's probably, I think she's two now. So two years ago, they would have had a new baby in their house and I bet some other people did too. Well, when you get a new baby in the house, what do you have to do? Like, what do you have to think about before the baby arrives? Like, if you know the baby's coming maybe in a couple weeks, what do you have to do to get ready for the baby? You have to, let's see, we have to get some clothes because you don't want the baby to be chilly. And you have to get diapers, don't you? Like I had here, you need diapers, that's for sure. You go through a lot of those. And what else do you need for babies? Maybe a soother in case they cry Wah! all night. You might want a soother. And what else do you need? Sometimes you need some safety stuff for when they get older, don't you? Some people put up a baby gate so a baby can't like fall down the stairs because they're crawling towards the stop, top of the stairs. And what else do you need? Oh, what about a baby like carrier to put a baby in? You might need that for the car and a stroller. There's all kinds of things. 
I bet there's something that you never thought about that you might need. Does anybody know what this is? What is that? It's little, it's plastic. This one's white. Do you know what that's for? That's called a plug cover. And what you do with that is moms and dads put that in an electrical outlet, they put it in, and that way when baby gets a bit older, baby can't put their fingers in the socket and get electrocuted or put something in the socket. Do you know what? I knew a little girl once when she was little, she put something in a socket and it caused a fire in her house. So these are really important to keep baby safe and to keep the whole family safe. We put these in the outlet and then baby can't mess around with the outlet. So that's something that we want to protect babies, don't we? Well, when babies are little, moms and dads and their brothers and sisters protect them, don't they? We make sure they don't fall down the stairs. We make sure they don't put things in plugs. We do all kinds of stuff to keep them safe. But what about when we get older? Who keeps us safe then and who protects us? You know what? It's God does. That's his job. And he loves us so much that he loves to watch over us. And so he protects us and keeps us safe when we get older. Even when we think we don't need someone to keep us safe, God's always watching over us. Well, there was a baby in the Bible that God kept safe. And that baby's name was Baby Moses. And that story is found in Exodus 2, 1 to 10. So if you have your Bible, you can turn to Exodus 2. So it goes Genesis, then Exodus. So Exodus 2, so it's right at the front of the book of Exodus. And it's going to be verses 1 through 10. And this story is all about when Moses was born. And Moses was born at a really dangerous time. The Israelites were slaves in Egypt, and the Egyptians made a law that all the baby boys had to be killed. Can you imagine? That'd be scary. Well, there was one brave family, and that was the family of Moses. And what they did is they hid their baby boy so the Egyptians couldn't find him and he couldn't get killed. So God protected baby Moses by giving the Israelites, that family, an idea of what to do to keep their baby boy safe. I'm going to read it to you out of my The Lion Storyteller um, Bible, because this is a really good one, and I think you'll like it. So we're going to read about, it's called here, The Secret baby. There was a basket in the water. There was a baby in the basket. The baby's big sister was watching from the riverbank and God was watching too. Why was the baby in the water? Why was the baby in the basket? Because the baby was a Hebrew, a great, 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 great grandson of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. There were too many Israelites in Egypt, the king said to his soldiers. If we're not careful, there'll soon be more of them than us. So I want you to kill every baby Hebrew boy. How sad. Some Hebrew mothers cried. Some Hebrew mothers ran. But this baby's mother was clever. She covered a basket with tar so that it wouldn't sink. She laid her baby in the basket and prayed that it would be quiet. Then she hid the basket in the reeds near the riverbank and hoped that nobody would notice. But someone did, not just any someone, the daughter of the king himself. She went to the river to bathe and she spotted the bit basket boat. She sent her servant to fetch it out. And when she looked into it, oh, what a surprise. The baby's big sister, Miriam, hid her eyes. She couldn't bear to watch, but God kept watching. He had a special plan for this baby. I don't care if this baby's a Hebrew, the king's daughter announced. I want to keep him. Hoochie, hoochie, coo. I shall call him Moses, but I will need a serving woman to feed him and look after him. That's when God nudged the baby's sister Miriam, just enough so she jumped up from where she'd been hiding. A serving woman, she shouted, almost before she thought. I know of a serving woman that can help you. Well, then fetch her, girl, commanded the princess. And God just smiled. For now, little Moses would be raised by his own mother, taught the Hebrew ways, and be ready for the day when God would use him to set the people free. Well, that's a cool story about God, how God protected Moses, isn't it? See, one day, Moses would stand up to Pharaoh, and he would lead the people to the promised land. He would meet God, he'd get the Ten Commandments, and he would end up writing, they're pretty sure, the first five books of the Bible. So more, Moses was a pretty important guy, and none of that would have happened or not in the same way if the people had killed baby Moses, would it? So we know that God looked after Moses, for sure. 
but did you know that God wants to look after you too? Just as God had big plans for Moses, he's got big plans for us. And he wants us to grow up and discover those plans even more. He just loves watching you grow up and looking after you. I want you to look up a verse. Hopefully you've got your Bibles there. But I want you to look up Jeremiah 29. And remember, Jeremiah was one of those weeping prophets. When we did all the books of the Bible, remember we did Jeremiah and Lamentations? That's because some of the stuff they said made people cry. This won't make you cry. This is a good thing. This is found in Jeremiah 29, verse 11. So if you got your Bible, turn to Jeremiah 29, verse 11, and I would highlight it in your Bible. Do you know what? It's already highlighted in mine. Look, you can see the yellow right in my Bible right there. This is a great verse. It says, For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a future and a hope. We sing a song like that in church to remind us of that. So God says, I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not harm you, plans to give you a future and a hope. And if God has plans to give us a future and a hope, that means God's going to look after us too, doesn't it? He has a plan for our lives. And that plan started even before we were born. God knew us before we were born and is, has protected us our whole lives. Isn't that amazing? God loves us that much and will look after us. All right, we're going to do a quick review. <clears throat> See if you guys remember the story. All right, I've got a true and a false card. Are you ready? No, I can't get these mixed up. Okay, question number one. The baby's mother named him Moses. True or false? The baby's mother named him Moses. This is a tricky one. Like, this is really tricky. Let me put it this way. The baby's real mother named him Moses. False, because you know what? It was the princess who named him Moses. It wasn't the baby's real mother. Now, you could argue that the princess was his mother, but it wasn't his real mother, so we'll say that one's false. Okay, got another one. The baby sister Miriam put the baby in the river and sat back and watched. True or false? True, right. She sat back and watched what would happen because she was concerned about her baby brother. Okay, number three. Pharaoh's wife found the baby in the basket. True or false? Pharaoh's wife found the baby in the basket. False! It wasn't Pharaoh's wife, it was Pharaoh's daughter, the princess. That was a tricky one too. I don't know if you got that one right or not. Okay, number four. It was a random chance that kept Moses alive and not God's plan. That's an easy one. It was a random chance that kept Moses alive and not God's plan. That's false. That's false because we know that was definitely God's plan that kept Moses alive. And lastly, number five, God knew each of us before we were born. That's a no-brainer. That one's true. God definitely knew each of us before we were born. All right, let's pray, and I'm going to believe that God's going to keep protecting you just like he always has so far. All right, Father, I thank you for the kids today. I thank you that you love us so much that you look after us and you protect us. So, Lord, I just pray that you'd be with the kids this week, that you would watch over them. And I pray that you'd even show them ways that you're looking after them and protecting them. So I just bless them today in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, you guys. See you back next week.